Kyler Earnhardt, as the sun crests once again over the horizon and bathes the golden land of Asara in its glow. The town of Nautis is just waking up, but you have risen before the dawn. This day, you know, has been on your mind for some time now. You know that today will be one of the first major moves, one of the first decisive blows against the Capitano. The spice fields await you and a small contingent, perhaps, making this strike. Things can go wrong, you know, very easily. You've done this before. Sometimes alone, sometimes with friends or compatriots, at least. Unlikely allies. But in either case, you know that no plan survives first contact with the enemy. So you've learned from your father, and so you've learned from experience. You know that past a certain point, it will just come down to cunning, quick wits, strength, and will. Having risen before the dawn and sharpening your senses, you know this is what you've been training for. All that remains is to do the deed. Time to go to work. Surprised to see you awake. I didn't sleep. Why not? There've been um <clears throat> developments. I don't like that tone. Come on. I don't like you to lose sleep over development. <clears throat> What's to do with the dread knives? All right. What have you heard then? I met up with this person Sarah's been talking to last night. More like he met with me. He's not a fan of dread knives either. He knows that there's going to be attack on these. Spice farms up north within the next couple of days. He knows that the dread knows. Whispers We've been apparently. quiet about it. We haven't said anything. I know. He's not going to act uh, to stop Somebody's us. talking on the open. Yeah. <clears throat> he knows that after these farms are destroyed, the dread knives are going to come and check it out. He intends to be there, to deal with them. I intend to be there with him. What exactly do you mean? In regards to what? It sounds pretty simple from my end. Everything up to this point. I'm, you have to understand that I'm tired of hearing of, well, there is someone, well, there is this guy or this woman <clears throat> who will help, or I have friends. Who are these people? I thought you trusted me to handle this side of things. If you want me to tell you, I will. <sighs> I don't know if this is a plausible deniability thing. There's a very fine line that we walk. I understand there's things that you do that I wouldn't approve of. Mm. I understand that they yield results. I get it. But one of these times when you go and do something with these things or people you can't tell me about. 
my son might not come back and I will not know where he is. I won't know what has happened to him. And I will have no way to find him. It's a risk. I don't think I can bear that risk, my son. This isn't me saying I do not trust you, but... <clears throat> Say the word and I'll tell you then. I told you I wouldn't keep things from you anymore, unless I had to. I intend to keep that, which is why I'm talking to you now and not doing it behind your back. Despite my first thoughts on this. Note of that, my son. Hmm. You say that this individual is no friend of the drug knives. No. Are they a friend of ours? No. They're a means to an end. But the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Basically. The plus side on this is if I am going to work alongside this person, I can try and gleam as much intel as I can from them. How dangerous is this person? Incredibly. This is the kind of thing we can't fight head on. We need to prepare. We need to know what their plans are, if we want to even try and stop them. This is the kind of person you maneuver, you don't go up against. It's a parry, not a block or an attack, right? Right. And me being involved in this isn't making him come here. He's already here and he's already moving. He's already doing his own actions. It just so happens that it lines up with what I want to do. And what happens if this person's goals change because of what we do? Hopefully I'll be done doing what I need with him. Yes, but is there a chance that we become their next target or enemy? If I'm close enough to this guy, I can try and figure out what he wants to do beforehand so he can avoid it if possible. Or at least know something's coming. I don't like this. I know. Then what does my son advise from what he understands of these people and this country? <clears throat> In relation to the Dread Knives? And the action that you're planning to take, yes. What's going to happen is going to happen whether I'm there or not. At least if I'm there, I can be involved and see what's happening. Hopefully. Deal with the people I need to deal with. We can't fight blind. <clears throat> and I'll admit, it's a personal thing for me. I'm worried that you're going to get tunnel vision over this, my boy. I know the end goal. That hasn't changed. I want to go to Gwen. I want to be the person you want me to be. I want to be a good lord. I can't do that if I'm looking over my shoulder. I need to put it to bed. And this is the first and probably the best chance I've got at it. How many more names? I'd be happy with two. <laughs> you know, 
It's funny. I have relied a lot on Raylan <clears throat> to be a, a light in the dark. She grounded me in a few ways. I had hoped that would have been all I had to lean upon. Now that light is gone. And now, without the light, I must rely on my son. To see through the dark himself. Fine. If you think that this is the best course of action, and you can... Promise me that you will, in the very least, keep me abreast of what is happening. Enough where things remain safe, and you do not divulge too much. Then, then I will agree to this, and I will heed your counsel. Thank you. It means a lot. Really. Yes, well. I trust your judgment, Kylo. Just understand I am your father. And there is no victory or treasure in the world more valuable than you. Do be careful, my son. Of course. I'll keep you appraised. Are we, um... <clears throat> trust you to do so. Moving on these farms today. Yes. We will be. I'm waiting for Marin to show up and give me the details. Okay. I intend... You, myself, Marcus, Lady Elena... Tordy, perhaps two more, to deal with this issue. People who are going to listen, not fuck things up. Yeah, I'm pretty tired of that too. This will be during the day, however. <clears throat> the location is obscure. Because you have another objective tonight. It cannot be ignored. As I said, you will have another objective tonight that cannot be ignored. You and Seravith will be going to meet with the Robber Baron. And get a measure of this thug. What I really want is for you to look, be looking for all the ways in and out where he frequents while keeping his company. You're going to need someone to probably vouch for you, and that's going to be Vazrin. And he's going to send you with something written. So you do not just show up and he has you killed. I don't like it. I don't think <clears throat> it's necessary. And the fact that he wants to entreat with a criminal and put them in a position of power over the province, because what? Magic? I'll admit I'm quite biased as well. I share the same sentiment as you, but... You're able to sniff out a scoundrel better than I. Hmm. What's the guise that we're going under? Is it the, uh, potential orc threat thing that we're doing? I could hand him over this note that we have, that we took from the camp. We have all day to think it over. Okay. That might be the best angle. <clears throat> Considering his iron mine will be potentially one of the targets, he'd be wanting to know about it. Exactly. We'll use something like that to do that. Understood. Thank you for telling me, and not just doing. 
promise you it would. would have been easier. Hmm. I trust you. I always will. I'm gonna. Hmm. I was gonna say I'm gonna get to training, but. I don't want you to be too exhausted. Well, Lena, we have work today. I'll need you at your best. Say, so, quick in and out. Going to be burning the spice farm to the ground. Find whatever information we can, so on and so forth. All right. Let me see who's knocking on the door. Lady Rowena departs the room after a long period of stoic silence between the two of you, practically feeling the cold radiate off of her. I do for you, Miss Lonnie. We'll deal with the moments to go on today. <clears throat> Good. Within I'm still waiting to hear back from Mark or what happened with Kovaz. Right. We can come together after we've all had our meetings. I believe he had his yesterday and mine is today. I just want Good. to go over once more what your questions would be and how I should formulate them. Because my questions are quite simple, at least from the embassy. I have to figure out where to disperse these troops that we're getting from the other embassies. How to effectively use them, hopefully get a mem to give orders to the embassy we'll see, he so they can be displaced without replacing We're already ahead of ourselves. Does a mem even know that this is being done? He might not be alright with it. No, he doesn't even know about Inquisitors being on the ships. He knows ships are coming, that's it. We have to be very forthright with the Baron. We need him to control the garrison here with his own sovereign authority. My concern 
Before we can rely on him to do that is to figure out what his intentions are. What does he intend to do in the Imperial Force here? What does he intend to use them for? What is he going to do when those people on those ships arrive? I thought about backing him into a corner. Using the leverage that he has eight days until he won't be able to use the Imperial forces anymore because they'll be here for other reasons. That'll scare him into potentially making more current decisions instead of waiting for time. Might get him to make a move against the robber baron sooner rather than later so he has enough manpower just in case things go wrong. A good idea. Correct. Very well. I think the biggest okay. thing is to find out where he stands, who commands the fucking guards, is a big thing. I'll Why aren't people reeling in the copper tunnel? Aye. And then if it moves into more forthright conversation, if you feel safe enough to ask what happened at Bolano, what he did at Bolano. You can even state it that the Major found out about it. Brought it up as a security it's concern. The ledges. If you cite it that more people than just you know, if he's that kind of man, there'll be no reason to harm you, because more people already know. Okay, that's it. I'll be waiting to hear from you, Lavia. Be careful. Well, I'll have guards with me if that counts for anything. Still. Yeah. Good day. I'll speak Take later. Care. Excuse me. Right, very quickly, you two. I need swords. So, th uh, this afternoon, we're going to be hitting the Capitano Spice Farm. We found it. It's somewhat to the north, by the mountains. We can get there by wagon. One of the transporters, named Carlissa, has decided that they are not going to die for this spice farm. So they're going to transport us there. We're going to bring an extra wagon, just so we have enough places for people. We're going to drive right in past our checkpoints, bullshit our way in. As soon as we're there, swords out, butcher's work. Mm. The men that are there are apparently mercenaries. Capitano's panicking, hiring outside help. If we kill the aggressors, get information, burn it to the ground. The we hightail it out of there, there's going to be a plume of smoke like no tomorrow. We don't want to be there. And I count on you too many guards there are. No idea. Whew. We'll be bring about eight of us. Good. And you roam. I'll be there. And funny enough, Excellent. more than just finished my plate. So I'll be ready Good. in Good. Find your way here around noon. We'll get moving then. Alright. Understood. <sighs> Also, Marin was outside. She said she has something to tell you that it was important. Perfect. It's about this. Send her in while you two go about your day. Mm. I'll see you at noon. Right. Make sure you have potions you and bandages. Mm. When time allows, if this goes according to plan, I do have a few things to share with you. Word from the north. Very well. You take care. I'll be around, Mr. Shilbrook. On the topic of armor, I'm without mine today. I got busted last night. Well, yesterday. What do you mean? What happened to your armor? I was helping Morden with a task. Orcs. <sighs> Go up to my study. Take my leather armor, bring it to Tordy, get it resized. Understood. We don't have time to wait. Do it now. We'll see you around noon, Alana. Make sure you're ready.
Thurman. He's getting worried. What you got for me? The Raven has left the nest. Oh, excuse me. You know, I was like, I'm not like. Right now. So am I. Good morning, sir. Oh, that's great. Maybe you can buy me a bag. Hmm? Why do you have to be a good drow? I was going to say, oh, but I thought the paper fell from the bottom. Because I don't know where else to fit then. I thought I was hot at ish, but you know, yesterday. Uh, hey. Got a second. Fine, yeah, Sharik? Yeah, come on in. Um, I assume. Uh, sorry, could. Could we have the room? Oh, sure. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll come find you after you. There, you're done. Or you can find me. By the way. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Both. Want me to close the door? Okay. Like, uh, actually both are I ready. assume, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um... I meant to find you earlier, cause, um... I have a backup armor for K that I could modify for you for use today. I know, you know, important stuff today's and stuff. It won't be perfectly fitting, but it would uh, get your job done. That works. I'd appreciate that. Yeah. You see, uh, your other armor would be Tazim's leather armor there. You can guesstimate what was about to happen. <clears throat> sure, I can use Kate's. Oh. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, here, uh, if you put it on, I can uh, pull in the sides and stuff to make sure it's less gaps. Well, it still won't be perfectly comfy. I must say, I can see why so much. All right, here I'll pull in right there, and then right here, and here, and there. All right, cool. Doesn't feel so bad. Thank you. Of course, yeah. Um, anything to help out. Try not to break it, cause then I'll, I will have to charge you for it, but I'll smaller charge, of course, you know. He puts a uh, silver coin but, on the table. Yeah. Okay. Since you discounted me last time. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, well. Oh, I have the windows open. Uh. Yeah, like, whatever. Hi, Harmy. No, Are you grabbing no. my ass? Get off of me. Get off of me. No. Are we okay? Stop it. I'll handle it. You know, I'll, I'll fix the problem. <laughs> I'm frustrated. No, don't you touch me. I'm, I snoop. Hmm? It's my job. I'm get frustrated. Get get, 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 go on, get. No, no, shoot. You, you get on, get. No, you shoot. You shoot. I'm a customer. Shoot. I'm a paying This suddenly customer. became not a game anymore. All right, fine. We can't afford mistakes anymore. Yeah. And I know. <laughs> if I didn't say something, if I didn't do something, he would have. It might not seem like it, but I was trying to protect you. Are you just staring at a door? It's kind of weird. I'm a customer. It's yeah. not weird, it's business. I think they're closed. It's okay if I. I don't know what the door means. Thank you. Yes. Oh, never mind. Oh, uh, normally what the door means, uh, 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 Normally, normally the door is closed, it means the place is for me, it's closed. Yeah, I just open. was having client uh, communications. What's up? My order. Yes. It, yes, it is done. I think you're all paid in full, right? Correct. No mistakes there. All right. Um, all righty. I'll make sure I have those results. Enjoy. Right. Try not to break it all in one spot. Wish you the best of luck in your fight. Well, I mean, your works hold up. Every time I've used it so <laughs> far. Thank you again. Yay! Glad to hear. Party as the man departs with the goods, <laughs> proclaiming that they've held up every time. You huh. consider the number of rended and shattered hey, pieces of armor that have come back. Ah, Marcus, hello well, again? The um, customers is everything come back as well. The model. Shield mode doesn't work Even if, the if they're just becoming followers anyway. It's doing its job. Um, hmm. Nothing at the moment. How are you thinking of that? Well, very of those. Um. Um. The mannequin and target uh, have been wonderful, uh, honestly. Uh, honestly. Uh, Few of my thanks for that. Did you rest up today? Hmm. So, okay. Sarah's friend. I'll do my best. The guy. Hmm. Well, um, kind of spooky, isn't he? He is perhaps the most dangerous person like that? we have come across to date. <sighs> it's not a game anymore. It suddenly got very real. Uh, yeah. And I mean this, it is best you don't get involved with him. Do you want anything inside the shop? At all. Mmm. Taught here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I don't want to get involved. He... May have introduced himself last night? He said he wouldn't. Okay, well, I didn't tell you that. Okay, I, I, I'm not supposed to. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to tell anybody, but he specifically said not to tell. Anyway, um, I, yes. Don't know anything. I'm oblivious. It's fine. I'm just going on life at, like normal. And I swear I wasn't trying to be noisy. I was just trying to get away from Sadrek. Yeah, what's his deal? What's wrong with him? I don't fucking know. He was just crying, and I was I wasn't in the mood to deal with it because I had like the worst day yesterday, and I wanted to be the one crying. So I didn't want to hear some other random hobbit start crying. You know, I wasn't gonna deal with it. So I was gonna, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, it didn't work out. He thought you were spying, so. Do you think you could do something like that? <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> I tried to clarify that with him, sure. but not sure if he uh, believes me, so. I doubt it. <clears throat> yeah. I don't want you getting hurt. It's... Partly because I care about Verzerim, but I also care about you. 
to deterrence. I'm thinking about maybe a mechanism to have some, I don't want to see him go through that again. Uh, nasty surprise for any would -be we can't make these mistakes anymore. <laughs> you understand, right? I'll use my builder's insight here to see yeah. what's on the other side. Good. Oh. Oh, oh I see. You're yeah. probably going to be needed today, just so you're aware. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't think there's too much going on behind. Please. I want to be useful. Well, if you can swing a sword. <laughs> you know I can. Yes, I do. All right. Yeah, I could hammer that out. Thanks for the armor, Torty. Uh, that would uh, that would be wonderful, actually. Um, all would be of course, yeah. Right. If uh, any parts today. are uncomfortable or um, rubs you an armpit wrong or whatever, uh, let me know. I'll fix it up. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. I could set it up for see you around. Be safe. I'll try. No, I understand how you got the reason, but I like to hear. All right. There you go. Two silver. Cute smile. All right. Well, I'll get the necessary parts and then come by later tonight. Uh, actually, well, Marcus, I, we've known each other for a while, so I'd like to think I can. Who knows? Knock, knock. Hmm. Knock, knock, knock. There's a microphone on. Be bright. <laughs> feels awkward. Even the slightest little creak or crack of the structure might just, well, you know, you get a little jumpy sometimes when you're not thoroughly inebriated. And right now you feel like you need to be even more inebriated than you want to watch yourself. Call me dummy. Taking a poke and peek around, you don't see anyone immediately at home. And taking a long swig of rum feel more like you're in your element, more drunk. Hmm. Just going to also call for God, just to make sure. Would Arn be at home? Okay. Yay! I know 
the key. I, I did everything. I'm allowed in. Now that Marcus isn't here to kick me out. So I'm good. <sighs> Taking several laps around the immediate foyer of the house, you notice that Arn's place is, well, it seems like some of the furniture is new. It's actually quite nice. Then you also realize that Arn is someone who has had his door kicked down at least five times in the last six weeks. You imagine with the amount of furniture that has been smashed, thrown, burned, or otherwise destroyed, that by now a significant part of the living room has probably been replaced, along with many of the dishes. Did I eat yesterday? No, Setting we are about to have a party and the fucking mother. Oh! Consider whether or not you've eaten, and a woman simply passes by, not paying you any mind whatsoever. Here. I was gonna play concertina, now I don't want to piss off mysterious woman. Hmm. Young Drow. If you unmod your stream elements for the time being, it'll solve your problem. Wisdom is great. Sitting there listening to everyone vent and air not only their frustrations but also their ideas on what to do about a place like Modus and the upcoming Imperial ship and otherwise dwarven emissaries <coughs> in the east, barons, robber barons, and all kinds of mysteries and adventures. You wonder, of course, especially with your own recent misadventures. strategy session will be coming back in the next several days or if these misadventures appreciate it obviously going to get someone killed sooner or later mm. Either way, i know what you're talking about i'm not even here right now actually but i saw you struggling is, thank you should be and you wonder where you fit into all of that sorry toti i was dealing with some mold hey He's what? I was... Don't worry. What do you need? Um... Just, uh... You know, check up on Captain. Make sure. I had an idea as well for, um... The big ship. Because I have access to a, a, a small ship that's really, really fast. So that might be able to be a boon during the whole everything as well. Marcus was talking about his plan. So. He was talking about ideally having a skiff in the water to pick up scraggles. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, uh, it's one of the fastest ships I've ever actually had the pleasure of, uh, you know, when catching for, so. Is <sighs> it a skiff or a ship? I saw Hermes. I... It's a, it's a dinghy, but it's fast. Hmm. Could be useful. So, it'll... Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Any little bit could be useful, and that's why I like to tell everything to Captain, because he thinks of things that other people don't, so. Yeah. yeah. Did you... Do you think he's going to be around soon? Uh, possibly. I <clears throat> think so, yeah. Okay. I don't know how soon is soon, though, so. I will keep you company, then. Yeah, uh, you want a drink? Please. <laughs> the good stuff. Always. 
I also have a lot of vodka at my place. So, if that's useful, it's like a barrel's worth of vodka. <laughs> 25 units. So. Always need alcohol. Mm-hmm. At the mention of this, Kyler, you feel the taste of sweet rum run through your mouth and down your throat. It burns just enough to know it's good. Very good. Where'd you get that? Um, Clifford. Yeah, that's my... Usually, like, once a week I get a whole barrel from him, you know? I thought I recognized it. Mm -hmm. I once had He says a... it's the Hilatian spice. Yeah, that shit'll fuck you up. I once had a <laughs> 500 proof sip of whiskey. Knocked me out immediately. Oh, is that the XXXXXXX barrel? Yeah. I have some of that, actually. Hold on. Yeah, no. Little bronze uh, flask. It's full of it. Hehe. <laughs> It's my emergency, in case I need to get fucked up, <laughs> you know? How often do you need to get fucked up? Very rarely, but there's occasions. I try not to do the whole garbon sort of drinking. I just like to drink throughout the day uh, and smooth myself out, you know? Better to be sway than shaky, you know? If you're drunk on a ship, does it count to the... Yeah. It uh, helps out a lot, actually. At least me personally. Amazing. Mm hmm. It at least makes land feel the same as it does on the ship. So, that's good. Hmm. <clears throat> you seen Vezrin today? Uh, yeah. He's working. Uh, he was with Clifford last when I passed him. What you need him for? Just checking in, I guess. Hmm. He seems good. He was uh, training the people in Cosato to use uh, spears and stuffs. He's so, arming the peasants. Says it's rough. Yeah, uh, so they can at least have some sort of defense against orcs, you know? An ability you don't normally like when you do that. Yeah, someone else said that, and I feel like that is pretty valid, but, um, mm. I feel like it's more important to survive the orcs than be completely helpless. Are you drunk right now? Mm, just a little tipsy, tiny, but no more than... Usual, usual. Um, I've been a little you... sober these past few days. I feel like that's part of the problem. <laughs> you notice at this point that at no time has Torty stopped moving since you've been talking. But yeah. Did you know about the whole little hobbit village uh, that's outside the town? I did not. Well, I was excited to see it because I knew about it for a while. Don't be too excited. That is my warning for you if you ever you know, have to help out Hopper over there or something. I'm not going there again. But uh, he might ask for, you know, folks to help escort him through the forest or whatever. So. <sighs> yeah. Tordy, as you sway around on the carpet, explaining these things to Kyler, you flow with the motion of the ocean. Not even just the alcohol, but it's just you. You notice, however, that Kyler feels... A little impenetrable at times, like a stone. Didn't she just go up there? How did she? Huh? She likes to pace while she reads sometimes. 
She snuck out that way when I came down. Oh, I was going to say, I didn't see her leave down here. How did she get back down here? I was going to be like, whoa. Uh, I assume she did what I do and just climb down and stuff, but it's harder to do while carrying a book, you know? I mean, can't still do it with one hand. Safe to say, but... Torty, you are the only person yeah. to climb up onto my roof. Really? The only one? At least that way. You've oh. done it, what, three times now? Four. Yeah. I was only aware of two. Oh. oh. Well. Surprise. It's a comfy route, you know? It, 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 it helps skips the Marcus barrier that is sometimes in these two doors. Yeah. He shouldn't have sent you home last night. It's kind of hard. Mm, it's fine. I knew things were tense and stuff, and I was just like, oh, I'll just, you know, climb back down the way I came. But then I was like, wait, they're drow. They can see me. Ah. Can hear you too. We need to work on that. Well, I ca well, I don't have anything for you know my klutzy ass knocking everything over, but I do have one thing. I have. Where is it? Hold on. Mm -hmm. I have this thing, so that to help. What is that? Uh, so it's a, uh, it's Torty's timeout trinket. Uh, basically, you put it on, and then it just... Calorie watches, Torty's mouth moves. No sound whatsoever comes out. So yeah, it does that. That might be the greatest piece of jewelry I've ever seen. Look at it though, it's so gross, it's a tongue. Did they come in hobbit size? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean... Oh shit, you're right. We could put it on Severac. That would have solved your issue last mm. night. I really would have- I- See? I'm so stupid! If I just came down, put that on him, I could just continue sitting up there just fine. Fuck! <laughs> Well, anyway, um, ta-da! <laughs> I may have a lot of stuff. I'm not good at remembering I have a lot of stuff. Like, I have so many trinkets and toys in my pockets and stuff, but I never remember them. I know the feeling. He takes out, like, several <laughs> small pouches of, like, powder and vials and stuff like that. Holy shit. I have flash powder too! I forgot I do! That's a that <laughs> somebody gave it wasn't to me. flash powder. <laughs> but flash powder is important, yes. Oh. Yeah, well I got flash powder. I have I have a coconut. It's my smoke bomb. You mean um like these? Let's he see. pulls out a very small, confined version <laughs> of essentially that. You understand how Oh, absurdly large that coconut is for a smoke bomb, right? It's just a lot of smoke in it. Like a lot, a lot of smoke. <laughs> Don't drop it in here, please. Kyla, no, it's okay. You have the... to actually light on it. <laughs> looking at the coconut, you deduce that the interior of this thing must be filled with some kind of smoke producing burnable greenery maybe a few other powders or what have you you consider that it would produce a substantial amount of smoke for a long period of time if it were to burn maybe sending up something like a smoke signal or perhaps a smoke screen you said you had to light yours yeah yeah it's a, a burning one i have another one at my shop too so in cases of emergencies. 
This one has bits of flint on the inside. So when you throw it hard and it stops against something, mm -hmm. the flint clicks and ignites the rest of it. Oh, that's clever. I didn't okay, it. it's a lot more convenient than trying to burn a coconut. <laughs> yeah. Still yeah. be useful though. <sighs> oh yeah, for sure. Like I, I figured, you know, it could be a central part of the plan with the boat, where we throw that into the um, the, that's the, the the fuck the powder room, and then they'll th think everything's on fire. So that is my thoughts. Is that the best way to get people to abandon ship? Oh, absolutely. If there's a powder room, that is the most dangerous room in the entire ship. Like, no fires are allowed near it. They have skylights in it. They're the little glass that, uh, triangle prisms that are in the, um, in the dock. Uh, or the, 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 the poop deck, you know? Um, and, uh, it, it shines light down into it. It's called the poop deck. <laughs> You can at least practice your writing if you're gathering on. <sighs> I refuse you to need believe. A book? I have a book. I... You want me to write in your book? Yeah, look, it's a brand new clean page. I was going to show off my scribbles, but I um, picked up the wrong book. <laughs> That's not very thick. Hmm. Kama Sutra thingy that you found, is it? Uh, what? Kama Sutra? The sex book. What's that? Oh! <laughs> no! No, Vazran has that. Of course, he'd be the one to get a book on sex. Well, Basil gifted it to him because she knew he's a fucking nerd and he needed resources for that stuff. I don't need it. <clears throat> Back to the plan. Mm -hmm. Once you get these people off the ship, how do you stop them from coming back on? So, if you are away from dock, uh, the only way up the ship itself is if you're really good at getting a grip, or if there's the, the ropes on the sides and such, the, there's usually ropes on down below just in case someone needs to grab up. You pull those up when you don't want people to get up there and stuff. So, uh, if those aren't down, there's no really getting on the boat when it's in the water, unless you're <clears throat> equal height to it. What if it's docked? If it's docked, then the best way to get people to not be on it is to keep them running away from it so they think it's going to blow up um to have uh some fire cannon fire shooting at them so they keep on running and scattering or to take the boat and go yeah that was my thought exactly i don't know why we're coming up with a chain to put behind the boat to stop it from moving if everyone's off the ship it doesn't move anyway right yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, that was my thoughts too. The best thing we could do is get the boat to start moving. So they, they like, okay, so my plan, my idea, right? We're in my dinghy on the side of it in the dark. They can't see us. They start to leave and they move the boat away from the dock ever so slightly. Um, meanwhile, we have someone from our team on their crew hid in the skies. They go down to a smoke room or a powder room, throw a smoke bomb, start raising a fuss, start screaming their, uh, their brain out, being like, oh my God, that there's a fire. Everyone panics, jumps overboard. We're in our dinghy. We climb up, take over the board, keep on going. To where? Where do we dock a ship like that subtly? <laughs> There's no real subtlety with a boat like that, unfortunately. So... <sighs> that is the hardest part about the plan. It's like, we can take it, and then we can go, and then we can just 
you know, hang out in the waters a bit while everything cools off. But then, you know, you got to wait for it to cool off. That's assuming they're not going to try to chase you down and all that kind of stuff. That That is why I, I, I suggest Scattershot. It's really brutal. It would take care of the issue pretty well, you know? Make sure that no one bothers <laughs> to try to hunt down our ship. Scattershot. But, um, yeah, um... It's when you take shrapnel, random bits of stuff, stuff it in the cannon, fire that instead of a ball. Scatters out, does horrible damage, uh, guaranteed to absolutely wreck anything in front of the cannon. You want to shoot the people in people's. the water? <clears throat> I'm saying that is the easiest way to make sure they don't follow us. That is obviously going to kill a lot of people. Marcus doesn't want to kill people. Exactly. That makes it a lot harder. I don't know how to do this and guarantee that there's not going to be someone dead. Because probably they're going to have a couple of lents on them. You know, flint locks. They're going to bang, bang. Like those small night kills. So. Yes. Yeah. That changes things. A couple of them. A couple of them ought to have it, especially if they have a captain on board. Uh, almost all captains have one, you know? So... Uh... Let's see... I think the current plan is to attack we it could once docked. Which seems... Very surreal to me. And I've raised my objections, but I think at this point, I'm just going to do what I'm told. Yeah, in the end, I'll do what I'm told. But I will, again, raise the fact that it is bestest if we take it when it's mid-motion. Because then if they abandon it, they're fucked. That was my thought exactly. You know, the ones that can't swim, that don't abandon, they're going to be so panicked that we'd be able to knock them out easy enough. I don't know what we'd even do with that boat. I don't know where we'd put it. <clears throat> oh no. If you pirate from a pirate, are you still, uh, you know? Yes. But it depends what you uh, do about it afterwards, you know? Well, if we get everything done here and we can get Tizim to be a noble here can pardon himself or pardon us at least or something i don't know rename the ship that's fair yeah make it official you know i have a toot sign we can we can name it the toot what a toot sign <laughs> a toot yeah it's a it's supposed to be the us toot but uh the rest of it kind of fell off so it just says toot I, I I just have a collection of everything from the astute because it became the, the, the bloody rose, so, you know. It might actually curse our ship, though, if we do that. Who knows? Maybe you shouldn't do that. Yeah, never mind. <sighs> I'm not going to... Oh. Uh-oh. Hmm? What's that noise? No. <coughs> No, it's okay, it's an idea, but what was you That's saying? That's what I'm concerned about. What's your idea? What? Well, I, I was trying to think because um, Tazim asked me to help, uh, help folks get comfortable with the ship. I haven't really had a chance to do that, so I should probably start doing that. But another person that actually would know ships would be Garbam. He knows ships. So... Last time I saw a kebab, he was whacked out of his face. Yeah, he's he's bad at drinking. Um, going to talk to him about that today. Hopefully, it was a one and done type of drink, sort of thing. 
I think attacking this boat on the dock is stupid. I don't think it's viable. Yeah, I agree. And I think doing this without killing anyone, it's a dream. Yeah. There's gonna be loyal people that will fight to the death. There always is. There's going to be the idiots that rush at you, even if you have a cannon loaded at their chest. What we overheard was that there were 40 people on this ship. But we also heard mm -hmm. that next shipment, quote-unquote, they're going to add more fighting men, which implies that the 40 people on this boat aren't fighting men. Yeah. Which means we may only fight 12, 15, maybe. Depending on how hard they want to roll into this. God, that's done. <clears throat> that are actually combatants. The rest... Uh, oh. There are around 20-ish rolls on a boat that big that are critical. And you can thin it out. Like I told um, Tazim, I think you can have as low as 12 people, sort of, uh, with these jobs and stuff. But at least half of those men are job-dedicated men. So they wouldn't have more than that for combat, at least. So to pilot the ship, we need at least 15 people. At least 12-ish. What if it's already moving? Yeah. We don't need a cast off. If it's already moving... It's easier. I would say, well, if I'm there, I can I can handle all the wind catching. Um, eight would be comfy if we were already moving. Landing is going to be a harder thing. Docking would be actually really hard, but we could be moving. We could pick up people part way through later on. So, oh. hi. Hello. Am I interrupting? No, just talking plans. Mm. Ah. Uh, I'm not sure if the um, talk with the robber baron is still going on today, but um, are you prepared in the case that it is? Yes. Well, maybe. Mm. I believe the current plan is to send Sarah with and I to um, get a measure on him. Right. I was thinking <laughs> to disguise myself and to give reason why I was there. <clears throat> I could show him the map of those orc attacks that we found in the uh, the orc camp. He'd be wanting to know about uh, any potential attacks on his iron mine, right? That we assume mm. is definitely one of them, so maybe that could get us in the door. Um, in the door, <clears throat> what... Maybe I should phrase this a little um, better. Uh, the talk I had with him was uh, essentially, look, I want to help you, but in order for me to help you, some people that I know need to trust you. And he's desperate at this point for any sort of aid. I see. So in this scenario, we, we're either on even ground or have the advantage. Okay. I didn't know he was already willing to accept us then. Good. Makes it easier. Yes. Anything I should know before going in? Hmm. The first floor is covered in supplies if you go into the, the keep. There's a balcony on the second floor. Probably the best way in for the drow. Good to know. But... You might be... you might know more than I do. There's an outer wall uh, that surrounds the courtyard outside of the main keep. I don't know how to scale that. Hmm. I'm sure I'll see things there. I was more curious about the man. Anything I should know before going in? Anything I should avoid oh. talking about? Hmm. I'm sure he'll be curious of what your relation is to me and how we help each other and what he what you can do for him. 
So I would keep that in mind. What would be the best scenario? Other than that... What should I tell him? <clears throat> you can either tell him that we're... Mm. You know, blacksmiths in a town, or... You tell him that I handle dirty work for you when you need it done. If... If you're going in disguise, that might be the way to do it. You might even be able to play that card of, um... Being the one who knows how to sneak in to the, uh, castle. Hmm. You think that's a good idea to tip my hand of that? It's a card. I'll let you decide whether or not you should play it. Fair. So, the idea is you're going to meet him, and then what? Talk shop for a are bit. Are you scheduling a second meeting, or are you... I'm just there to get a measure on the guy, uh, and to yeah. see if there's a way in. <clears throat> Easier ways to break in to the castle. Alright. Tizim wants me to... No, I'm assuming... Under the... Get an idea off the guy. So that is... An actual well, I wanted thing. you to get an idea of the man. Well, it's not... I'm saying it's not Tazim saying... We're telling Vezra and we're going in there to get an idea, but really we're doing this. He genuinely wants me to suss this guy out. I see. <clears throat> All right, then. <clears throat> what about the, um... The farm thing. Is that happening today? I believe so. He's got a short list of people he's going to bring with him. I think eight people in total. I'm not entirely sure who Very they well. are, but the plan is to go in, do the butcher's work. Well, I'd like to go if I'm on... If, if I'm not on the list. After all, I do have full steel plate. Yeah, you have to bring it up with him. He said the names, I can't remember exactly who. I think you're involved. Maybe. I think Sarah was meant to be, but... I don't know if she's around today. Might be sleeping in. Mm. Mm. Oh, right. This might be difficult. He, um... When we were first talking, he had me blinded and handcuffed. And that's how he took me into the castle. I'm at the point now where I no longer need to do that. We're going to... If he's going to do the same for you or not. Not a fan of that. <clears throat> yes, well. Once you're in the keep, he lets you out of the bag. I would hope so. Mm. Unless he's suspicious of something. I'm well, sure I can always be. make it... Maybe I'll go with you um, to the spot and say they're not willing to come handcuffed. And they wish to remain anonymous. I, I well, don't know if he's desperate enough to agree to that, though. I already know where the keep is, though. So... I don't think me being blindfolded or not is... really matters, right? As long as I can see the inside. Perhaps. But if he demasks you or something like that, could be a problem. I won't go fully in disguise. It'll be... me. <clears throat> Oh, I see. Hmm. It doesn't really matter in the end if it is me, because if it all goes to plan. Good point. It won't matter. Won't matter. Did you ask I would ask him any or... questions that you... Hmm? 
I did, <laughs> and the god said soon. <clears throat> yeah. Busy man. Their soon is different than my soon. <laughs> hmm. Um, did you ask, um... No, uh... My entire train of thought's gone. Um, I would ask... When you get there, any questions that have been nagging on you? Such as, um... Well... His questionable methods and all of that. <clears throat> okay. Are you going by Vesrin? Yes, he knows who I am. Okay. So it's all... <clears throat> I'm a friend of Vesrin, and... He wanted me to talk to you about... Well, he wanted me to get a measure on you because I do his dirty work sometimes. Or something like that. Something like that. Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe, um... More of a hesitant... Uh, Vesrin has vouched for you, so I'm here. I to want to help this you, blade, basically. But I've not seen you before. I don't yes. even know your face. <clears throat> sure. Right. And I've only heard the worst. Yeah. We're there to put aside some fears. Right. That could work. Elena has me practicing handwriting. What do you think? Oh. He's here. Hello. It's certainly better than three years ago. Greetings. Thanks. Is there a reason why there's a congregation in my living room? This is an intervention. Yes. You've been blacksmithing too much. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <clears throat> Goodness. Hello to you, too. Hello. Now, do you actually need something, or can I get back to work? Uh, I had some ideas I wanted to toss out, or helpful things, mayhaps, maybe. Um, I'll be honest, we've been talking so long, I forgot most of the stuff we talked about. But, um, I have access to a really fast thingy, uh, in case uh, that would help out with the ship situation coming up soon. Uh, I, I, I have to uh, ask. No? The whole idea okay. is to have a chain that's already been forged. Nailed somewhere nearby that I'm going to need Tang to do shortly. And when the ship arrives, that chain is going to be pulled taut and nailed in somewhere else, keeping the ship stuck in the harbor. Okay. Uh... Did we need to snoop in? Uh, or were we coming in by land or by uh, ship at night then? There's not many or people just... around us that could sail at night. Not to mention, what's the point of coming in by sea? We still have to get on the land. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Am I going with you on this, um, this farm raid? I do have f steel plate after all. Can you follow instructions? You know I can't. As long as you do what you're told when you're told, so be it. Of course. It'll be you, myself, Sharik, Olena, Cade, Ro, and Tori. Bring up and more plates. We'll be so broken. We have a full complement. All right. We're going to be going with this transporter by the name of Carlissa. She's agreed to come here around noon. So I need everybody here around noon. 
We're going to get into the blacksmith wagon and <coughs> wagon and make our way all the way to the mountains. It's at the edge of the province. Apparently you can get there via, via wagon. Marin came back with information <clears throat> that proves that the Capitano has been keeping this farm a secret. We have the paperwork for it to prove it. But even more of an important target is a man named Leon Flores. The man is the one in charge of the farm, the producer. If anybody knows who, what, when, where, and why, it's going to be him. We get in there. We kill the mercenaries holding the place secure. Get our hands on this Leon and make him talk. As soon as we have what we need, we put it to the torch and hightail the fuck out of there. There's going to be a plume of smoke going God knows how far, and we do not want to be there when people go to look at it. All that'll be left then is the ship. Torty and I worked so, out a deal. We're interrogating him. Is fine. I got something else working. Just so you're aware. Will it be ready by noon? It's ready. Uh, yes, at a spare chess piece that I just tailor down the sides a bit. Not perfect, but it works. That's just a chest piece. That's what I've been using mostly. Go upstairs in my study, take the arm and the legs, and get them to a size, and next time do what I asked you to do. Sure. Is there anything else that you need to know? before we carry on with the day. Just to recap, we're going there, capturing this Leon, interrogating him, burning the place down, and then going to this ship? Not today. The ship's not supposed to be here, as far as I'm aware. We'll have to check the dead drop and find out when it comes next. All right. <sighs> There's an elf named Marco in a speak with Fucking... Fucking elves. They're everywhere. <laughs> you just can't get away from Put these on. I'll them. tailor them. Should we head back to your shop? Yeah, I can do it here or at my shop. Let's head to your it shop. It doesn't matter where. Get out of this fucking room. Alright. <laughs> yeah. All right, as the door to the outside opens up as Arn goes to check the door, you can hear a low roar even through the crack in the door. You imagine, of course, comes from the direction of the arena. And it sounds like the <gasps> fights are getting started. Ah, oh, damn. She's like a puppy. I can, I can size stuff the wall my there, it's undone. okay, it's fine, come on. Wait a minute, Torty, my huh? shoe's undone, no, I gotta- Come on, hurry up! No! Shriek, come on! <laughs> Actually, Shriek, is your belt tight enough? I don't think so, do you wanna look at it? Does that look tight to you? Hmm. She's not stopping. Let me see. <laughs> Alright, let's go. <clears throat> If you happen to have the leathers done. Your leathers are done, yes. If you, uh, or if someone would follow me quick, I can deliver Tell it. You. I'm running to, uh, yes. Add one. Do you mind doing so, so Miss Torty doesn't okay. have to, if yeah. I... Thank you. See you. Hello, Captain. <laughs> Bonjour. <clears throat> Here you go. I believe she fold fully or paid fully for it, so all good there. Excellent. Thank you. 
I will let the mm -hmm. captain know. You are free to go about. Yeah, let me see you and you, Mr. Vajra. Good day. All right, come on, let's go to the fights. Come on, push. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, yes, sizing up the, the, the arena, yeah? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Can you believe they had seats made for the guards? Sure, I can imagine. Nowhere I mean, else we've been. Day. Nowhere else we've been has had that. Doesn't that say something? <laughs> I don't know, does it? Maybe... Wait, gods, don't tell me this is... A place of humanitarianism. Is this the best we have to offer? I don't know which answer is worse. Oh, gods. massive clang of the colossal anchor can be heard as you both approach the arena. You feel like if you listen cl closely enough and focus in the arena channel, you'll be able to hear and feel and see everything as it happens moment by moment. I prefer to not know what's going on. I think it's always a worry. The elf jumps off of the dwarf's shield and is able to leap, quite literally, into the air onto Dredge. However, Dredge, with a 17, they're a little too slow for you. You bring the anchor in front just in time and send him careening off to the side. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh. And a good strike from Dredge. Sherik? Okay. He comes in and swipes at your leg. It's a good job, good smash. I might lose 50 copper on this. Is that his name? Or are you just being racist? Oh, I'm just saying, he's being like fat at his ankle. What the ankle is that? And then we have smash and grab. That's a smash and this is grab. So far, they are the ones who have been giving Dredge quite their time. These two work together really well. It's clear, Dredge, that these are mm -hmm. too late to bed. reason. They fill each other's backs no, with weaknesses filled with strength. Dredge is currently losing. You're gonna have to take your own max bet, but fight. What? This is max bet. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah, gross. If you bet on smashing grabs, you can go with the entire box. Understood. Have you seen this high return? Yeah, because everyone bets on dredge these days. You know what? I'll bet 50 on smash. What the fuck? Give me a second. Oh, listen. Oh, oh, I see. I'll return on smash and grab. 50 coppers on them. I'm sure I'm going to lose, right. but if so that's if I don't, how much I'll make? He's able to move out of the way, and the majority of it is a graze to his arm. If you want to do that, you remember, can't be 50 copper. When everyone's betting dredge and only three people bet smash and grab, the entire pot will go to those people. Uh -huh. Despite everything that's been going on, the elf still seems to have a lot of stamina, able to maneuver around the battlefield and dodge and weave. The dwarf, however, seems to have taken a pretty heavy beating. 50 copper on smash and grab? Leap. He makes a good point. For the 14, that's going to impact into your arm. Your dump will be thrown off by a little. Rolling for trajectory. Dredge with a natural 20. He trips and catches his foot on Smash as he leads into the air. And you will have an opportunity Rabbit. for one action. Understood. Rabbit. Oh no. Oh. Oh. 
Dredge catches the elf out of the air and quite literally throws him into the ground with enough force to crack bone. The elf's movements are slowed. It seems that that grab out of the air was enough to really do some damage. is dazed. I wonder if nobody dies from this age. No. I think you could do really Rolling. well. I've been banned before I even attempted anything. I'm not really getting used mm -hmm. to the blood spot, but I am getting used to the... Dredge, with a critical 1 plus 4, you'll try and fling him. However, he actually managed to get your, ha your anchor pretty down in there, and you are exposed to Grab's no. attack. I got Rolling. Like with a three plus two, that's a critical. You can still break a bet. Who do you think is going to win? Dredge or the smashing grab? I don't have a mind to make bets right now. Well, that's a shame. At least you can enjoy yourself. I don't know the Asaran priests were into blood sports. Anyone who's seen Dredge fight a lot would know that it looked like he was very close to rampaging, but it looks like he shook it off. Okay, yeah, you can do it, Dredge. Come on, Dredge, you can win this. I'm not too interested in the fights. I'm mainly interested in this book you're reading. Very strange place to read a book, but you know, to each their own. Well, some people that I like to be around like to watch the fights. You know, puts hands on Clifford's shoulders. I agree. A strapping young man, right? Did you place any baits? You think so? I think the red will. Did you place any bets, pretty lady? You can see Smash is down. Oh, I see. For the count, his side is caved <laughs> in. Which side do you think Dredge is gonna, is gonna The elf coughs up blood. It's clear that that hit took a lot out of him. They're both severely weakened. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I'll go with right. Alright. D. If he keeps the left first, you owe me 20 copies. Uh, I do. Well, actually, I owe you 20 of his oh, combo. Oh. Ooh. Oh, he just oh, punched that dwarf. Listen, copper scum. Dredge, no, please. Oh, he's, he's, he's already dead. He's already dead. This is dancing dwarf yeah. tossing to the dwarf mm. golf. Yeah. Well, we have played a game that's very similar to this. Always fun to see people engage in Mortal Kombat. Oh, the fucking spiral thing. That's right. Oh god! Oh no! Oh no! Dredge! Dredge! No! Dredge! No! Into the elf. 
That's gonna hurt. He's going to oh. kill that door. If he hasn't already. Dorf has armor. I, I don't know. There's I've hmm. also I've seen a naked wolf next to you. <laughs> out of a ten-story building, hit the ground and get up. It's a little bit of a wobble. The dredge picks up the dwarf and throws him at the elf at such speed that he is unable to dodge in his current state, colliding with him, quite literally oh. beating a motherfucker with another motherfucker. Oh my god. Oh my god, I've never seen that done before. Sure they can't seem to move. Take Just barely. It's not enough. Oh, 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 oh no. That's gonna be a um. Oh shit. Mm. That's gonna be a. Oh yeah, that's definitely gonna be a problem. Hobbit tossing, dwarf bowling. Hobbit tossing, dwarf bowling, and elven javelin. Ming. No, just Elvin Jowl. That works, that works. Elvelin Dwarf. That sounds like a woman's name. <laughs> so, what, what, what sports do they use orcs in? I think that's called Blood Bowl. I don't. Wait, uh, don't. Uh, there's a B? Maybe? Uh. Mm. I'm pretty sure orcs play badminton. Whoa, it shattered it. <laughs> That's a broken arm. Mm. Uh, they swing their clubs at skulls and they knock the skull back and forth over like this sort of post that's made from skin. Oops, stretched. I should get out of here. Uh, okay. I'll see you later. Your money left. Understood. I have. Uh, no, I, I owed him. Uh, later. Is the dwarf no, he lost. Oh, you know it's just gonna lose it though. Say what? <sighs> oh, oh, we have a guess what we just what good. I mm -hmm. guess we're just. Well, the family. He has your money. Oh he's he's literally crawling away. Oh, he just broke his leg. Running down. Now I like to tell people mm. the fastest feet in all. Noise. Now we said the first one to go down. I guess I didn't specify for the. Count. What are you going to do that? <laughs> all right, I've got a friend in the guard. <laughs> He'll still race me, but he's my friend. So if you do something like murder and your guard friend doesn't arrest you, does that make them a good man or a bad person? Or makes a good man or a bad friend? friend. Everyone heard the dwarf call yield just as Dredge began to swing, and it's clear that he tried to stop, but the the velocity of the anchor was too much. Oh. 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 Nice, not moving. Half dead, contorted elf crawls towards the dwarf. Here comes Soma. The first group actually feel bad for shit. Yeah, they should have called it earlier. Dwarf should have stayed down. They always think they can g get back up and fight them. They never learn. It's not about learning. Dwarves are loyal. It's in their nature. Oh. Oh. And Dredge is now manhandling the dwarf. 
Whew. Okay then. Wow. So they must have been fights before this. No. no. Nope. Hmm. Well, there's my fifty-pounder. <laughs> 